about corporate governance and codes of uh, conduct following allegations of ethical misconduct involving a personal relationship between the managing director of Nigeria's tier two bank FCMB and a female employee. The bank has released a press statement announcing a board review of the allegations. In the statement, the bank acknowledged the existence of the allegations and said the board review would be immediate. The bank also asked all stakeholders to bear with the board as they conduct the review and respect, asked all stakeholders to respect the various families involved since this is a personal matter. Joining us to have a discussion on corporate governance and code of conduct is Wade Ahimi, a business advisor. Good morning to you, Wade. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, good morning, Rhodes. It's great to be here. Fantastic. Well, what do you make of the official press statement put out by, uh, by FCMB? Um, I, I believe it's the right, right thing to do. Um, FCMB, the board of FCMB has um, made the right decision towards ensuring that um, they manage the situation that is already on ground. Um, looking at organizations from a corporate governance perspective this is the first thing that you need to do you need to set up um, um, the board um, governance committee to look into these allegations because they are allegations until proven otherwise and subsequently whatever the um, outcome of the investigations are then you make a decision based on the organization's um, sanction um, greed and that will be dependent on what the board um, sanction greed is all about um, and what needs to be done after that. But I think this is the first thing that needs to be done. Put out this statement to the whole world. Let them understand that um, the board of directors, especially as it concerns the managing director of FCMB, um, so the board has to look into it. The board governance committee, which is a requirement of the corporate governance code, has to look into it and ensure that um, any unethical behavior or otherwise um, alleged will be dealt with and whatever the outcome of the investigations are, then they will provide you with, with the necessary um, actions in line with the organization sanctions grid. All right. Thank you for that. So as far as matters of corporate governance are concerned, this is an issue that's been widely discussed, social media, uh, pretty much all corporate areas. Is there pressure on the board review to be concluded quickly? Um, well. Quickly is is relative. These 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 are things that um, alleged to have happened some years back. Um, from all the things going around social media, um, the breakup had been since about three three four years ago. So it's it's an issue that the board um, governance committee really has to step back, get all the information and all the facts uh, as you, as regards the the, the matter. And then from there, they can now um, technically look at all the, all the um, issues, call the people who are available to be listened to so that they can get all the facts together and be sure that um, there was no breach in the organization's policies, especially as it relates to its code of conduct or ethical expectations. So um, quickly, quickly is relative. Um, there are usually time, timelines set out for this. Um, the... Um, the message sent out by FCMB has not given us any specific timelines, but usually some of these things could take between four to six weeks, depending on on um, on how quickly they can they can get the people who will provide the necessary inform, um, information that is required. And some of this could even take longer. Um, I know I know of an organisation where there was some um, investigation into some alleged breach of um, 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 unethical. Um, What's it called? Unethical um, behavior, and it took a, about five to six months to finally conclude. And the board um, putting together its its um, report and and making a recommendation. So quickly is relative. It depends on how quickly they get the information from outside, because some of these things are some of these things are relating to people who are outside. Um, some relate to to someone who has passed on. My my condolences to the family. Um, my sympathy to the to the family of the young man who passed on. But a lot of all these things are not just they're not cast in stone. It's not um, what everybody says on the social media pages that really is how the board is going to go about um, dealing with with the review. So there are processes for this review, and these processes have to be ad um, adhered to so that you are sure that um, whoever is being um, What's the word? Whereby it's being um, checked upon ensures that that process in line with the board's expectation has been properly carried out. Otherwise, it will, it will become null and void. And you should also remember that some of these things could lead to um, 
other legal implications that are outside the scope of, of FCMB. And, and that also has to be very, the organization has to be very careful about that. Thank you so much. All right. So this matter, of course, has divided public opinion. Many are pointing to, I want to go to the West now, pointing to a fast food restaurant chain, uh, McDonald's, who fired their CEO, Steve uh, Easterbrook, in 2019 for a relationship that he had uh, with an employee. On the other side of the divide, it's been said that we should not be looking to the West for any direction on this. It's a unique Nigerian matter. How, how, how do you see that? Uh... Well, there is, there is no, is, is not unique to Nigeria. Um, like I continue to state, and, I, and I'll continue to reiterate, the first thing is that does the organization have its policies as it relates to um, its code of conduct and ethics? If they do, then that's what you're going to follow. If you look at the case you were talking about in, 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 with respect to um, a restaurant chain, a fast food restaurant chain, um, uh, McDonald's, it was clearly stated that the CEO had been in breach of the organization's ethical policies and the sanction was to let him go. So if the board of FCMB has its own um, code of conduct, has its own policies as it relates to um, um, inter-organization relationships between a, 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 a male and a female, then those things would have to be looked at carefully. And if those things are clearly stated out in black and white and there has been any breach by any party, and what the sanction grid requires, then they must follow that sanction grid. And that's why I said um, it's not about how quickly you go about the review, but how detailed you follow that process to ensure that you leave no stone untouched. And at the end of the day, you come out with the right resolution and the right, um, the right decision. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So you mentioned uh, inter-organizational uh, relationships. Should there be explicit corporate guidelines that prohibit romantic relationships between employees. Some corporations in Nigeria have them, others do not. Some feel you shouldn't police the personal actions of adults if those actions don't have anything to do with the brand. Is this going to cause these things to be reviewed again? Well, in, 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 when you look at organizations and, and in today's world where um, brand, brand management has become a major risk factor, um, a lot of organizations are beginning to look at um, relationships, um, office relationships from a different perspective. Um, sometimes, um, and, and over the years, you've heard about um, um, what's it called? Issues relating to bullying, um, issues relating to um, harassment, and, and, and a number of, of, of those things. So what, what has happened over time, and that's why I said it's not peculiar to Nigeria, it's all over the world. Um, harassment is harassment, bullying is bullying, intimidation is intimidation. So what organizations are beginning to see is starting to put together um, policies that will help them manage this kind of um, relationships within, within the organization. Some, some organizations call them on, on wholesome relationships. Um, some organizations allow for them, especially when they're single, and especially when you consider the fact that um, such organizations are filled with a lot of young people, where you have 70, 80% of, of the organization being young people who the only, um, the 80% of their interaction is with the people within their workforce. And what te technically happens then is when these relationships go on and then they become, um, they get to a stage whereby it could lead to um, um, either party um, agreeing to get married. Some organizations agree that you can get married within that organization, but you can't work within the same department. Others will tell you that two of you can work within the same organizations. And what organizations tend, tend to do is try and look for um, a, a soft landing spot for whoever has to leave the organization because you don't want to, to lose both talent at the same time because you are you are trying to um, set, create a policy that would, that would say you don't want to have this kind of relationship. But these things happen, and when they happen, what you fall back on is what are the policies that are in place? Um, do you have a policy that says um, no um, office relationships, or if there are office relationships, they are not things that um, should come to the knowledge of the organization. And like I said, some organizations, because there are a lot of young people, they do encourage some of those things so that they can ensure that at least they are not losing um, talent um, because of the fact that they are, they are putting so much pressure on, on young people who, who have to work 
16, 18 hours in a day, and at the same time have to think about their, their um, social balance. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's neither here nor there, but the, the, the major issue you try to balance out here is, is your reputational risk from a brand perspective. And this has to be clearly put in place by putting in the right policies, looking at the kind of organization that you are. If you're young, um, you, a lot of young organizations provide for this kind of things and, and so on. But typically you need to have a policy in place that deals with it. Um, you need to ensure that those policies are being adhered to, that members of the organizations understand what the policies talk about. And at the end of the day, you have the right mix of people understanding and continually being explained to how you manage a risk from how you manage the risks from a brand perspective because today the brand goes beyond just the name of the organization, the people, the consumers, and, 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 and a whole lot of other stakeholders. Thank you so much for that. You, you mentioned uh, reputational risk. Should customers of a brand care about personal relationships between employees if said relationships have nothing to do with the company's ability to fulfill its obligations to said customers? What is the reputational risk there? Well, um, a number of things have, have, have come into place over the last 10, 15 years as it comes to businesses and, and being sustainable. Um, I'm sure 15, 20 years ago, a lot of businesses looked at the fact that once I had healthy numbers, I posted good profits, and then boom, um, my, my shareholders' value will go up, my customers would, would dance around and say, oh, this is such a brilliant business to to invest in, but today it goes beyond that. Um, there are a lot of, of, of soft issues that have been dealt with, and consumers, especially a lot of young consumers today are beginning to look at things that relate to ethics, um, things that relate to um, proper conduct um, for businesses, rather than just saying um, you're making so much money. What kind of ethical values do you have? What kind of sustainable values are you putting in place for, for the future? So today, managing that reputation as a brand becomes a huge aspect of, of um, risk management. And that calls into question what kind of policies you put in place towards ensuring that your reputation is being managed from an enterprise perspective. And this is part of the things that deal with the enter enterprise risk management um, philosophy that, that a lot of people are preaching today. So organizations need to look at the whole context of an organization in terms of ethics and codes in terms of business profitability, in terms of what you're putting in place for the next generation of customers who would continually be your customers and spread out the, the message of how, how great an organization it, it is to work. Um, when you look at this case in particular, it starts to bring in an issue of people trusting the organization in terms of working for them, which brings about a, a brand risk that could be um, it could be detrimental to the organization if not properly managed because some people start to ask the question, is that an organization I want to work with? Why should I work for that kind of organization if this, these are the kind of things that I hear? And that's why I'm happy that the board came out quickly and put this to rest and said they were going to look into it and ensure that things are put into the proper perspective. Because, um, like, you know, businesses today is not just about making money. It's about um, having the right work work atmosphere, people wanting to even come and work in such organizations, and, mm. and, and a number of other issues. Great stuff, great stuff. Wade Ahimie, uh, business advisor, thank you so much for joining us uh, to talk about this important corporate governance and ethics investigation going on across uh, at the uh, FCMB. Thank you so much for your insights. Thank you, Rotus, for having me. All right.